to do is get scaffolding up down the front. So there'll be scaffolding all down the front, down this side, and the same down the other gable end. It'd have a double handrail to about 1100 high, and there'd be a hoist somewhere here, so we could hoist it up to the roof and the scaffold surface. And then we'd go through a full risk assessment to make sure the weather conditions were fine, and that the partner that I'm going to work with, Stephen, is fit and able, and he can manage on a roof, and he's got the competencies. So once we've got, we're going to fit a valent panel, which is the evacuated tube one, just there. Um, and the first thing we do is fit two bottom brackets. Yeah. But so first, before we do any of that, Mr. Hopkins, we want the instruction manual. We want the instruction manual. Then what do we do? Read it and follow it. Follow it. Every installation which you complete, you complete it to the manufacturer's guidelines. Right. Okay. So this is the a bracket that we're going to fix. Um, and this part here, this hooks, if you look at the TV screen, this hooks behind this tile and the baton, which is those there have already been put into place. So you will see that these are now hooked behind the baton um, in readiness for this tile on top to be pulled over so it remains watertight. So once we've got these two in place, we then um, take a little bit out of the bottom of the tile just here and just here. We would normally do it with a saw that has a spinning wheel and we grind it out. But if we Plum Centre provide all this, all this kit. The kit what the source for is to fit any sort of thermal, thermal system is always made for ease of installation. Hence, if we supply a product, we want you to be able to fit it and not have to be a rocket science, scientist to do so. And so you can see how Chris is putting this together, really straightforward. Am I well, doing it right, Steve? You're doing it okay there, you keep are, it are, up. Are you, are you sure? Yeah, you're all right. The distance from where I've got the silver rail up here, so I'm, I'm going to have to put them basically here and here. So I'm going to do that now. Bolt at the back and spin this round so it's pointing up the roof. So you can actually screw huh? that to the rafters rather than hooking it over the tile on the tile baton. So I'll pass that to Chris Hopkins now, and Chris Steve, will install just, it. Just uh, while, while Chris is doing that, on this bottom bar here, I think I'm right in saying it's toothed, isn't it? So it won't actually move once yes. you've inserted it. It'll yeah. just, it's locked in. Yeah, it's locked. Firstly, I'll go and uh, go downstairs to the ground floor. Obviously, where I'm on scaffolding at the moment. All the scaffolds, what we put up, have a winch. It's not good practice to be walking up onto the roof carrying a panel on your shoulder. So we have a, a winch and an opening within the scaffolding so what, that we is can... A, is a winch a hoist? A hoist then. Or can a, a hoist be a, a winch? A hoist or a winch. A hoist or a winch. These, what you need to see here is this clip here has been put into the bottom groove. So it's actually hooked in place and it's bit into these crocodile slots so that it doesn't move and that won't move. And it's the same on this side. So we've got to put that in place so we can offer the base of this into position when we've winched it when we've hoisted, hoisted it, it hoisted it onto the roof obviously i'm ready to do the install what about lift mechanically it? lifting it mechanical lift that's <laughs> even better but <laughs> what we what we do first and foremost is we make sure you see this covering which we've got on here now this is specifically there to protect the panel and make sure that before we actually plumb it all into place there's no, it don't get any thermal effect from the, effect from the sun. So it's, when we run fluid through it, it hasn't got that te a temperature running through. It always protects panel, stops it from working. So right, first come on then, let's have it. I've had enough of your talking. Oh, you were going to stay at the bottom. No, and then we lock it into place, slip it into there, like that. Are you okay? On. I've got my leg in the way. Are you okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you happy with that? Yeah. Right, I'll, I'll get the bottom in. If you can. So presumably one of you's always got a hand on it and just keeping a safe hand locked. Yeah, always keep, always keep an hand on it. Obviously, if you start, like I say, it is flat. It is a big flat surface. If wind gets underneath it, you let go of it, off. it can be off. Yeah, and you've got to think about your health and safety side of it all as well. So, yeah, we need to come um, across to. You okay, Christopher? We need to go that. Where? If you just slide the panel across, are you okay? Um. Obviously, this this is only one collector, but on, on normally you can bank a, you can have a bank of two, you can have a bank of three, and just keep on adding adding them in. It all depends on the size of the property. 
but Sorry. when obviously you have a surveyor come round to the property, he'll size your house up for the system which you need to have fit to produce you the hot water for your, for your property. Plumber, who or heating engineer, will be in the loft. And um, do you want to pass us that lead slate up there? We, we'd have to have um, a flow and re return. So this is called uh, a solar deck slate. Um, and it's made, as you can see, it's bright orange. Uh, it's made of silicon. So it, it'll go up to the high temperatures um, which solar thermal liquid goes up to. So it can go up to plus 200, 250 degrees. So this will still remain watertight. So you must make sure you get the correct lead slate for solar thermal. Otherwise, if you use a normal EPDM rubber, once it gets above a certain temperature, it goes very saggy, so it wouldn't be watertight. Okay, so this, you would put this on this particular roof, um, somewhere like there. So you would pass the tube, which comes from the plumber, who's inside, we'll give him a knock. Yep, he's in there. So he'd pass the tube through the slate, and then we'd go from here into the end, and then put a compression joint. And then we do the same at the other side and put another lead slate on the opposite side and feed it back into the plumber or heating engineer. Um, once it's done that, he'll pressurize the system and we'll check it for any leaks, make sure it's not leaking. Well, then we would remove this um, cover once that the system's pressurized. So this would just simply comes off um, and then Solar lead slate into the plumber, and you know, we want to know what happens inside now, don't you, with the plumbing bit. So, we'll now go over to the valent engineer, Stefan. Are you ready? So, you're going to demonstrate what happens inside.